da palcoscenico, uno showman pazzesco, il mio amico Mike Obdey. Please. Thank you. So, uh, oh, blimey, I've said buongiorno, and that's loud. <laughs> Thank you, I think that's better. So, uh, hello everybody, my name's Mike Hobday, that's what it says up there. I'm chief executive of Antworks, the intelligent document processing company. Um, it's a bit difficult to see you, but how many people were here last year? Oh, there's a few, good, okay, so uh, I'm not going to do the same speech. Uh, you'll be pleased to know, because uh, yeah, let's um, but let's kick off. Um, so uh, it, yeah, oh no, back. Can you go? There we go. That's better. So um, last year, um, and Vincenzo asked me to bring them back. I don't know why that's not playing, guys. But the. Um, uh, I talked about dinosaurs, and um, I reflected on the fact that, um, uh, in fact, I was in a, 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 a newspaper a few years ago uh, when I was actually at IBM, and I was asked what my job was, and I said my job was to make dinosaurs run faster. And uh, the reason I said that was that um, uh, I was doing a lot of work with artificial intelligence and robotic process automation, UiPath, got to mention, Blue Prism, uh, Automation Anywhere, all of that when I was at IBM. And all of my work was with um, large-scale, uh, old, long-standing enterprises. And what my job was to do was to ensure that the systems and people worked more quickly. And hence, I came up with this idea of really the job was to make dinosaurs run faster. Because the reality is new businesses, new digital enterprises don't really need robotic process automation. They've already got AI embedded. They're going to organize their applications in a smart way. So, um, so I talked about that last year. And I, for those of you who are, who are here might remember that. Um, and I thought I might reflect upon uh, what's happened uh, since uh, all of that time ago. And have you noticed the climate's got colder? I, kn I, I know maybe the weather's been a bit warmer this year, but, but economic climate has definitely changed. And um, so we're all uh, you know, facing uh, higher interest rates. We're all facing um, pressures on profitability. We're all facing uh, uh, inflationary pressures. And uh, obviously, that's starting to impact the way in which organizations are thinking about change and transformation. So driving efficiency, driving performance is more important than ever. And um, also what I've seen in the last 12 months, so when I taught last year about intelligent document processing, I think 90% of the audience had probably not really come across it and were still sitting in a, an OCR, optical character recognition, old-fashioned 40-year-old technology world. And uh, what I've noticed in the last uh, 12 months is IDP has become central stage in the world and thinking around intelligent automation. And uh, I was with a major UK bank only recently, and they said that there are only two key agendas on the digital stage, was um, conversational uh, banking and intelligent document processing. And that's where we've been in the last year. So uh, that's made my job a lot easier. It means that a lot more people are talking about, uh, talking to us. Um, you know, we're, we're signing some very not, you know, interesting business with major banks and others in the United States and in Europe. And uh, there's a real sense of momentum. And, and why is that? Because when you uh, think about automation, and um, you've been talking all morning and the early afternoon about automation in the context largely of robotic process automation, um, that's really about moving data. And when I reflect on my experience in digitization, intelligent automation, the problem has always been that there is a document, there are a bunch of people, often the most expensive people, sitting at the front of a process who are reading a scanned image. This idea of paperless is rubbish. The, the paper may have disappeared, but scanned images um, is, is, is what they've trans trans transferred to. And that's where an awful lot of the resources and costs sit 
um, in a process. And Hannah made clear uh, on, the, on stage earlier that actually it all comes down to the numbers. So unless you're addressing the paper or the scanned images of paper, then you're not going to deliver the business case you really need. And OCR, which is the technology that we've relied upon for the last uh, 40 years, really only addresses about 20% of the total popula population uh, of, um, of documents entering most organizations. Because the way in which we communicate, the way in which I'm communicating to you now, is unstructured. It's non-standard. It's the way in which I want to communicate. And what OCR did was try to push people back into, don't be uh, innovative, just fill in the form. And uh, actually, that's not the natural way. And uh, you know, that's why this idea of conversational automation um, and intelligent document processing is really coming to the fore. Brilliant. And, and this is the point. So some of these are structured. Sometimes we think about forms that we fill in as if they're structured. But I can tell you, uh, you know, forms that might include invoices, um, and we do a lot of work in the invoice space, is every organization likes to think they've got the perfect document. So even though there's a degree of structure, they're all different. So don't assume just because there is a, a shape to them that actually um, they're structured. The key is the level of variance uh, in the documents. So what I want to talk to you today about is, um, is to explore um, how we think in Antworks about intelligent automation and document processing. So I'm not going to give you a deep technical run through about our fantastic product. Ben, who's sitting on the, on the side of the stage, who's going to join me in a few moments, uh, can do that uh, out there. But what I want to do is start to get you thinking about what, what AI means in the context of consuming documents. So um, the important thing is IDP thinks differently. Differently, and by that I mean it thinks differently um, from you and from me. It, because we can't copy, IDP doesn't copy the way in which you look at a document. So let's explore what that means. So for us, AI and um, IDP, Intelligent Document Processing, it's not about trying to copy the way in which people read and take in information and transform information. We are about emulating, using our tools, our smart tools, to emulate the way in which uh, data is extracted so that the data that you find in a document, we can find. And the way in which we find it is done in a way, low code, no code, that is similar to and that you can understand will find the information that you want and do so accurately. So let's start with how humans work and think about consuming information. So if you're reading a book or a form, nobody ever gives it you straight, do they? You, 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 you line it up. And, um, and, and you know, I have particularly bad eyesight. I think I talked about it a, a year ago. But, um, and, and, and you move, depending on the strength of your reading eyesight, you'll either put glasses on or you'll move the document around. So in the IDP world, that's sometimes referred as pre-processing, uh, I like to call it image enhancement. Because if you take time in a nanosecond to d make the most of the document or the image that's presented and enhance it, as um, Vincenzo has done with my, my face on a machine outside, he may have done that with you. I look much better on Vincenzo's machine than I do in a photograph, I have to say. Um, that, but anyway, coming back to the point, it's all about getting the best possible image possible. And we do that as information, as a document, a scanned image comes into our solution. And, and the other thing, of course, don't you find it really, really frustrating that um, when there's an insurance claim or a mortgage uh, cl um, uh, application, what you end up with is a package of documents, almost as if they're stapled together, but it's a PDF and it's got eight documents in. Now, an, an OCR solution can't deal with that. So what we have is um, the ability to index and separate. So we can look at that package of documents, which is a single document, and recognize the patterns that reside within those different documents and understand what they each are. And then we can put those into the workflows that you, uh, that you desire for, for then processing extraction. 
That's the second thing. And by, by this stage, we know what the document is, and we've labelled it, and that's important. So the other thing to think about is, how do you read? So when you read a book, how many people, put your hands up, if you read every single letter in the book? Nobody does, right? Do you read every single word in the book? Nobody does. Because we read the shape of the words. We, we, we take in a whole sentence, don't we? We take in a whole line. So somehow the brain works so fast that um, uh, nobody, you know, you know, you're not down at font level, you're not thinking in that way. You're taking in the shape of what you're reading, that image, and your brain's working faster than you could ever want to read every single letter and understand that, you know, uh, what individual words are. So, again, we tr our solution is about trying to emulate the way in which humans consume data and speed read a contract. So our, our solution can read documents, or it takes documents up to 600 pages long. And, um, and if you wanted to template those, that would be a hard job. So the solution it has to be, I need to find the information as quickly as possible in the easiest possible way. So this is what we do. So this is where, if you remember, Vincenzo asked me for a title for the presentation, so I quickly came up with one. So Renaissance, with the emphasis on AI, I said I'd talk about. So again, let's think about, so this is um, 15th, 16th century Italy. Um, in the top right-hand corner, uh, you've got uh, some of Itali Italy's greatest artists, uh, including Caravaggio. And um, as you can see, and I've been posting these on, uh, on uh, LinkedIn, and you can go see there are, there are many more. You know, don't let the paperwork get in front of your art, is the message. Um, so AI has taken the idea that um, documents are a problem and great artists and created these uh, images in the style of Caravaggio. So you'll, you'll, you'll be able to see many of those on LinkedIn if you want to go and have a look. But the, ref the, the point of this is context is really important. So when you're reading a book, um, and let's say it's, uh, it's um, 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 you know, a crime thriller, right? So in your mind, it's a crime thriller, so you're expecting to find things. If you're reading an um, insurance claim, then you're expecting to find certain information. So understanding the context in which the book or document is presented allows the models to then go, I've, I've reduced the scope of what I'm looking for to these specific pieces of data, this, these ideas, right? So context is important. And then in the uh, top right-hand corner, you'll see patterns, right? So those patterns are, I am told by Google, um, that they are um, patterns for uh, nice frocks in Italy in the 15th century. So that was what we'd be wearing um, 500 years ago. Uh, very nice too. So understanding the patterns, the way in which information, uh, they may be different, but they follow a defined pattern is important. So patterns is the second thing. And then, of course, the last piece on the, on the bottom right-hand corner is rules, right? Because when we're educated, uh, we think a lot about the rules, don't we? And um, uh, so, so understanding the business rules that allow you to find the information, that's the third piece. Um, and then uh, the idea of language. So it's very important, if you're going to process documents, that you can do that in multiple languages, and the way in which those languages convey information. So, um, a, uh, for, so for example, um, uh, if you look for an insurance policy, earthquake in the United States is earth movement. In the UK, it's earthquake. I'm sorry, I don't know what it is in Italian, but sure, somebody can fill me in later. But you need to understand these differences. And, and so uh, language and text is important. And those are the four things, in, to my mind, which actually emulate the way in which we think, but subliminally, and actually at the fundamental core of, um, of human understanding. Uh, for us. So there you go. Those are the things to remember. And what that gives you is both human enlightenment. And if you're using those as the basis of the tools, that's the way in which in intelligent document processing, we're bringing those things together, setting up a set of tools that emulate uh, that. But I'm going to give you some examples. So here uh, we have Hans Holbein the second, uh, the younger rather. So does everybody recognize this painting? It's quite well known. Anybody not seen this painting before? A few, there we go. Well, Hans, uh, so um, 
the, the, again, this is an emphasis on context. So um, when you look at this painting, it's a beautiful painting. There's no doubt about it. It's 1550. And um, the very fact that it's 1550, if we look at it with the eyes of 2022, uh, we see a beautiful painting. But if we look at it in the context of 1550, it has a lot of meaning. So we can see in the painting there are two books. It tells us that um, uh, the gentleman on the left is, uh, is 23, would you believe, and the gentleman on the right is 29. It tells us about um, the, the they're actually brothers, and that the uh, guy on the right, who's visiting the court of Henry VIII, is a very learned person, as well as being a religious. And so the things that are on the table tell us a lot about him and his experiences in maths and art. And then what you see is um, this idea of the bl blurry image down here. But if you stand over here, uh, I think it's called, it's called I, forgot, I have to remember what it's called now, but uh, anti there's a, there's, a, there's a mathematical formula that defines it. But if you look over here, looking from this angle, it's a skull. It's very, very difficult to paint. But what that's saying is that we all die sometimes. <laughs> basically. So there's a message in there. And also, there's a subliminal text here uh, from the documents. There's a Lutheran book, Lutheran book, and then there's a cross, which is just pit poking behind the curtains. So these things tell us about the, um, the, the battle between church and state and commerce. And the, and the reason I wanted to bring that out as an example is if you understand the context of what you're looking at, and the context that, and, and the thinking of the person who created the document, then that actually helps you go to the, the inner meaning. And it's exactly the same in the way in which we look at, uh, at documents. Uh, again, no templates. Right. So a little test. So let's think about patterns. So um, I haven't tested this here, so we're going to see. So are you all listening? You are. <laughs> So, did anybody hear anything? What? Hmm? You heard something, right? Well, let's try it for everyone else. Have you heard a bit? She writes to her brother every day. Right, and I'm going to play the first one again. She writes to her brother every day. So, there you go, right? So, what's that all about? Well, that's about patterns, because language is a pattern. We think of it as something else, but it, language is simply a pattern of sounds and shapes and, uh, in which we, uh, un you know, we, we have understanding. So what's happening for those of you who didn't hear anything the first time around? Actually, your brain's working really hard. It's working a lot faster than any AI, AI I can ever build, right? And if, and if, if um, the lady was talking for longer, you would hear it because your brain is looking for the pattern in the noise. Now, when you're, uh, when you're told what's in there, your brain absolutely goes straight to, straight to 100. It knows exactly what it is. So that's an example of training. And I'm training your brain, and we use exactly the same methods in training our system. And then, of course, the great rules. The great rules of yes, no. So when we're trained as individuals, as at school, we're taught to think about uh, rules and what is right and what is wrong. And if you think about robotic process automation, a lot of, lot of that is I pick up this and I put it there. And if I can't find it, I can't do it. So these sets of rules are very important. And in artificial intelligence, let's call it in our solutions, putting in business rules that says if you find this, you do that in exactly the way that we do in our heads. So business rules are really important, and again, you can configure those within an intelligent document solution. And then I think it's, I think I finished my bit. So can I introduce Ben? Ben uh, runs my, all of my pre-sales, top guy, uh, ex-insurer, and he's going to introduce George. Thanks, Mike. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Um, so, in the picture here, we have George. George is um, five years old, and he's, uh, he's learning his spellings. And he's looking for patterns. So, these, he's learning the plural of, uh, in English, when to use S and ES. 
And just like, just like um, how the, just how, how a, a system works, really, is emulating, it's emulating that way in which humans learn uh, patterns. Now, getting a little bit more technical, uh, we can see here, this is, um, this is what uh, the machine will see when it reads a document. So this is an example of digitized, digitized text from a, from a PDF. And so the system sees this information, and it has to work out, how do I make, how does the IDP solution make this information meaningful? Using, using, both, using both patterns and data types. And um, there's various ways in which the, the technology works with the data to come up with exactly the, 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 the data and information that's needed to automate a process. So let's, um, let's explore some of those techniques. So the, first we have like labels or matching information. So looking for a series of, of patterns and information, training those patterns to enable to get the, get the data. Not looking at formats or templates, but looking at, looking at training, training patterns. We could also have um, associative techniques. So I'm looking for something in the range of something. I could also be looking for information which isn't on the, on the documents. So that could be, I found something, and because I found that thing, I know I need to return something else. Uh, you could also look for tabular data, so tables in the middle, um, and all the different variations of that. Also, master data, so lookup. So I'm, I'm searching for something because I know that I need to find that something and return something else. Or it could be using more complex techniques like inference, so I need to understand the context of a paragraph and what that means. So this could be, for example, um, something's changed within a contract or a policy. So I've got a paragraph of text explaining that change, but what does it mean? What does it mean for the, the system? What does it mean for the process? And then finally, additionally, handwriting. So um, both, both um, written handwriting and cursive handwriting can be uh, extracted and used by the system. So let's just let's look back at that, um, that text and look at some of the techniques used. So um, excuse my Italian, um, but you can see, for example, on, the, on one of the lines down there, you've got the uh, codice fiscale. So that's, it's found a pattern, and then in green after it, you've got the, you've got the data. So that could be validating based on a, an expression or a, a series of, of numbers and alphabets which, which make up that, um, that term. So you know you've got the right answer. Uh, next, you've got the uh, giurata del contratto. So what is, is looking for a range of dates in and around that, that data point. So you can see there the um, 2021 December and 2022 December. So the, the, the system is looking, for, is looking for patterns in the data and then looking for validations on the data that's been, uh, been extracted. So in, in this example, really the, what AntWorks is looking at is, is how, how do you get information from data that's presented? So here we've got the Vinchix, the company logo, but actually the information that's required is the is, is the name. And then another critical component is how the, how the human interacts with the system. So the system is not just a, an automated thing on its own which, which, um, which works without uh, human intervention. It works with the human. And that's the, what we call the human in the loop. So you can train to a certain extent, but then to get to 100%, you need that ability for the human to interact to be able to modify, update, edit, add information, and also to train new patterns and information so that that model going forward becomes more, more accurate based on uh, human interactions. So I'm going to hand back over to Mike now to finish off. Thank you. Brilliant, thanks. Great. So um, in the last minute of the presentation, um, so just picking up what Hannah was saying before, that's the second quote, right, um, is it's all about the money, right? Now, the great thing about intelligent document processing that we're finding is 
it is cheaper, probably 10 times cheaper, to use an intelligent document processing solution than to use humans. And um, it's only constrained by the accuracy, which then determines how many people you need to retain to uh, get you to uh, near 100%. So, um, so the, uh, but the benefits are that it's too costly to uh, have humans read everything. And so what we're seeing is we're being asked to automate processes often where humans are only sampling data. But when you can actually strip the data from 100% of documents, then that feeds all of your analytics, all of your analysis that tells you what your new products should be, and uh, an opportunity to develop new revenue streams. So there is a clear revenue opportunity. Now, I can't believe there's anybody in this audience who really believes that humans are accurate, particularly when they're bored, and they've been doing the same thing for the last five hours. But some of my customers tell me that's true, that they are 100% accurate. Because the truth is humans aren't. And, and, and we're not very well structured. And when we get bored, or when we stop and go and do something else and come back, we miss stuff. Our solution does not. And therefore, with the benefit of human in the loop, you should be getting a significantly higher level of quality than you're getting with your current, uh, uh, current, current, current team. So you've got new revenue, lower risk, associated with, and a higher quality. And of course, I've already mentioned cost. So the business case for IDP with your RPA solution, or of course, you may not need it because we've got APIs into an increasing um, uh, number of digital workflow uh, platforms. So that, I hope, is the story of intelligent document processing, giving you something to think about. If you want to come and see us, and we're outside, and, and Ben and I are on the stand all afternoon. Um, I'll leave you with uh, more Caravaggio. Uh, so I asked the AI solution to uh, tell me, well, how would Caravaggio paint a dinosaur? And there you are. I'll leave you with that image. Thank you very much. <laughs>